We live in a world where it's not always easy to feel like we matter. We have a lot going on in our lives, from school to sports to clubs to music to friends to family, and it can be so easy to start feeling like you only matter if you're on the team, or if your friends like you, or if you're wearing the right clothes, or if you're getting the right grades. And I feel like in moments like this, it is really good to go back to the Bible and to see what God thinks about us. One of my favorite chapters in the Bible is Genesis 1, because it's telling us right off the bat that we worship a fundamentally good God who created a fundamentally good world. Here are the first words of the Bible. In the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. And God said, let there be lights, and there was lights. God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning, the first day. Did you catch that? When God creates the light, God calls it good. And in the next days of this chapter, God creates the sky, the dry land, the plants, the sun, moon, and stars, fish, birds, animals. And every single time, God looks at it and God says that it's good. But then something changes when God creates humans. Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 31 says this. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created humankind in God's own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves along the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth, and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth, and all the birds in the sky, and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that God had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Did you catch that? After humans are created, God doesn't just sit back and say, oh, that's good. God actually says very good. And this isn't some calm, B plus, oh, very good. It's more like a, whoa, like you are fantastic. I made you in my image and I love you. The wild thing is, these humans in the story we just read, they didn't have to do anything for God to see them this way. It was enough for them to just be lovingly created in the image of God. And that applies to you and me and everybody else. When you wake up in the morning, before you've even gotten out of bed or combed your hair or brushed your teeth, God looks at you and says, whoa, you are fantastic. When you work really hard at an art project and it doesn't turn out like you'd want it, God still looks at you and says, whoa, I can't believe how amazing you are. I love you so much. And when you score the winning goal, or when you fail the test, God still looks at you and says the exact same thing. 
You were lovingly created in the image of God, and nothing can change that. Nothing you do can ever make God love you more, and nothing you do can ever make God love you less. So why does this matter? What difference can this make in your life? If you turn to Luke chapter 5, verses 15 to 16, the Bible says this, Yet the news about Jesus spread all the more, so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to the deserts and prayed. Jesus was a busy guy. He taught. He traveled from place to place so that people all over could hear his message. Jesus healed and performed miracles. But Jesus also had time when he didn't do any of these things. Times when he didn't teach. Times when he slowed down. When he didn't heal anybody. The thing is, Jesus needed this quieter, slower time out in the desert. He needed that time to rest, to recharge, to connect with God, and to still in those moments be completely and perfectly loved by God. If Jesus needed time to slow down and rest, then I'm pretty sure that we do too. You, whoever you are, Wherever you're watching this, you are already completely and perfectly loved by God. So what would it look like for you to be intentional about taking care of yourself? What would it look like for you to spend time doing things that would relax and energize you? This is going to be different for everybody. On the weekend, when I am preparing for the busy week ahead, nothing makes me feel better than grabbing my binoculars and going outside to look for birds. My little brother doesn't do that. He does photography for fun. And my dad always feels the best after getting active. No matter what this looks like for you, remember that as a human being, lovingly crafted in the image of God, You are already enough. Just like Jesus lived a busy life, we are often busy today, filling our lives with school, sports, clubs, friends, all good things. But remember to be intentional about taking care of yourself. Find time to rest and re-energize, knowing that you are already completely and perfectly loved by God.